Hello and welcome. My name is Jody Lynn Craven, founder of Abundance Consciousness, and this is my dear friend, Heather Marie. Hi, I'm Heather Marie, founder of Soulgate, and welcome to Channel Squared, where we have extraordinary conversations about everyday life topics. Yes, and today we have a very special guest, Melinda Lopez, creator of The Claire's. Melinda is a spiritual empowerment coach, an Akashic record healer, RN, MSN, in clinical leadership, and an intuitive. And today, with her help, we're diving into the witch wound. So welcome, Melinda. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for letting me be here. Yes, amazing. I would love to hear more about your story. And like when we say witch wound, let's explain what that means. So I'll, I'll let you take that question. Yeah. So the witch wound, actually, I'll, I'll tell a little bit about my story, but the witch wound really, um, plain and simple, it's really a wound of the feminine. And what I was really receiving even this morning was like, this wound that we carry, it's kind of like the dark side of our femininity. Because even when you think of the witch, you think of the evil old hag that lives in the woods and is ugly and is scary and she eats children and she'll put a curse on you. But in reality, if we think about that, that could be all of us when we get angry, if we're jealous and we don't express it and we don't just own it, it kind of becomes like that hidden secret that we don't want people to know about in a sense. And so that's kind of, in a sense, what the witch wound is, but also the witch wound is our lifetimes and lifetimes that we've carried over of the persecution of fear of being ourself or being seen of our expression of our connection of being like our natural self. And so in a nutshell, that's kind of what the witch wound was, is. And for me, my story, I honestly, when people would always tell me since I was a teenager, like you're a witch and I would always be offended. Like, how could you call me that? And even to this day, it's like, I, everyone's like, you're a witch. And I'm like, I don't resonate with that. Don't call me that word. Like that word just was like a cringe. And I didn't understand why, because I'm still in this role doing these things. And I love all the witchy things, but I was like, don't call me a witch. I don't do that. And I think as a nurse being in that field, I noticed myself really buying into the conditioned behaviors of I needed to be this way because if I show people who I really am then they aren't going to accept me they're going to shut me down and so that's kind of when I really started diving into what is the witch what is the witch and what is this wound and why do I feel this way so So you were like divinely called to this yeah I just got by chance (laughs) (laughs) yes amazing Heather I mean yeah well you know I I, as she was talking I was thinking about you know how does the the witch wound this this um you know ancestral previous lifetime you know compiling on of you know experience how does that affect us in our in our current experience you know, I, I think that um, this is a really fantastic topic that we're having today. And Melinda, I'm so happy that you're here because, you know, you're, you're, you're an expert in this and, and how this shows up for people. And, you know, I know for me, when I first started like really stepping into my um, exposure of who I am and what I do, this wound came up a lot for me you know, it, it really like stifled my, my growth and like wanting people to see me, you know, I just wanted to hide under a rock really. And, um, so like, if there are other people that are experiencing that, like, what, what do you recommend for them to like, see this wound? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's not being seen, right? It's like, you don't see that this wound even exists. Mm -hmm. What do you think? a shadow um like when you were saying when you were first exposed to this world when I was first exposed I was so afraid and the fear was around because I felt like I was going to be killed and I I know that sounds crazy like why would you even think that in this world but I remember 
um, I would start and then something would scare me. And then I would stop for six months and I would start. And then my husband's like, what's the matter? I'm like, someone's going to kill me. Someone's going to get me. And he's like, what are you talking about? (laughs) But it was just like, if I were to really be myself, because even though we have these past lifetimes of these wounds, you know, you grow up, my mom would say, you can don't act like that. Don't don't I don't want to hear you crying. I don't want to I don't want you to see this. You need to act this specific way. Even going to nursing school, you have to be professional. You have to show up. You have to look this way. You have to act this way. And so it was just like piling on, piling, piling, piling. And it, it came to a point. I remember it was like somewhere in my 30s. And I'm like, who am I? It was like I had become so disconnected to myself. So I think that how can people see it is really that disconnection and the really a nervous system response of fear of like, what, what, why am I feeling? I want to connect to myself. What is this voice that I'm hearing? I'm getting scared. Something is probably mentally wrong with me. Right. Cause that's even, that is the witch wound. When women were connected to their intuition, they automatically were like, you're crazy. You're hysterical. If your emotions, if you got upset, they would call, that's what their definition of hysteria came from. And what did they do? They gave them hysterectomies. They disconnected them from their womb area. Wow. Yeah. What? what? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Like it's that deep that they've they actually disconnect people women from their actual body yeah wow (laughs) this is just totally running through my brain and i'm gonna ask do you think that it was a uh like a purposeful uh distortion to to disconnect uh women from you know the spiritual realm from their abilities i think that the witch era which still goes on today. Um, I always say witch, witch, like I, I don't, I always, <laughs> I feel like it was really a gender side mm-hmm. because women were, they were feared because they were connected. And so yeah. powerful, man. Women make babies. Yeah. Like human life. Incredible, incredible beings. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I know that I've felt definitely felt that, that witch wound as well. You know, Heather, I relate to what, what you were saying. I kind of want to run and hide. Mine was like, I don't want to tell anybody. People are going to think I'm weird. Um, what are they going to say? You know that I battled that for, for a while, just understanding, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't yeah, want to tell know, people. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's funny because like, like when I think about how that showed up for me and like how limiting that like thought actually like is, it was really um, empowering when I was able to go, you know what? So what? What if they think I'm crazy? They're not going to burn me at the stake. We don't live in that time frame anymore. You know, well, maybe they could persecute me online. You know, maybe they could, you know, modern day witch hunt me online who cares? Fuck them. Oh, <laughs> you know, but, yeah, you know, I, I was just going to say, it's yeah. not as easy for everybody to just say, you know, bleep them. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Well, and you know, and the thing is, is that that is such, it's such a real fear. Mm-hmm. Like it's real, it's tangible, like the heart palpitations, the scary, like, oh gosh, if they, they get, they're going to come get me, you know, but you know, we're, we're not really, we're not in that timeline anymore. I mean, it, it does still exist to some degree, right? Melinda. Yeah. 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 But it's not like we're getting burned, mm-hmm. you know, the way we were before. Some but- people are in different areas of the country of kind you know like different of the world world yeah yeah maybe not burned but they're getting persecuted yeah yeah really so there's still this persecution going on there is still different and you also see it by the censorship is all i'll say gotcha gotcha wow 
Yeah. Wow. And you know, I mean, that's, it's just so interesting how like, you know, we live where we live and, you know, it seems like it's not really happening. So it's interesting to hear that it's still going on. So Melinda, how does somebody, um, how does somebody start to kind of like release some of this trauma? You know, I, I know that you have you have a, a program that you are creating with this. You've got a, a group for this. You've got multiple programs that are um, running to assist people. But um, if you if you, could you give us like a little a little teaser, a little tip on how to <laughs> kind of get out of this cycle? Yeah. So I would say like the very most basic thing is like to reassure your body that you're safe. Like you were saying, like, we're pretty safe. We're able to ha- be on the internet. We're doing these pod, the podcasts, like we're pretty safe right now. So it's about reassuring our body that it is okay to speak our truth, to connect to our womb or to our heart, to our intuition, whatever it is that you feel um, that resonates with you. I think that that's the most important part. Um, the monthly membership, nurture your witch room to wake her up and waking her up really for me is about right now, we need voices that are ready to disrupt things because with the changing of the world and how we want it to become and, and how, what we want to embody in this new world, we need a disruption. We need to become the disruptors. So that's really what the witch is. This is about you waking her up. She's not, she's not outside of you. She is not in another person. She is right here within you. And you just have to bring that out. We're going to always carry these different wounds. So how we really move through them as far as in the nurtured program is every single month we do a Akashic record journey where we clear energetically past lives and past woundings of like um, being disconnected, a sisterhood wounding, you know, our anger wounding. There's different things that we move through and we're going to energetically unwind that, release it. I mean, you can do that with, you know, journaling, um, maybe hiring a coach to, to help you move through that. But in the records, we do it. And then we are going to bring in the witch archetype and the different energies like the oracle, the healer, the sorceress, all of these different archetypes. And we're going to wake her up within you. So it's kind of it's a monthly membership, but it's 12 months long. And it's all about connection, expression and money. Cool. That's exciting. Gosh, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> I'm like, that sounds so great. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I'm like, so my mind is already blown. <laughs> like, <laughs> Absolutely. Could you touch more on uh, the archetypes that you were talking about for those who are less familiar? Um, you know, when I was thinking, which yeah, I'm thinking just sorcerer or something, I don't know. <laughs> The one with the mole. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I actually got these from uh, a book and I can't remember the author. I'm pretty sure the, I love this book because I'm fairly new to the witch. Like I said, I just, I I think it was last Halloween. I felt this call to do a workshop. And when I hosted this workshop, I cried and I'm like, why, why there was something I was so connected to. And so I just kept kind of diving in. So there's different archetypes. The witch obviously is the witch. She's kind of the whole package, but there's the healer, the healer within. So that's where your body, you know, you have this innate ability to heal and you know what best is for your body. So obviously I resonate with the healer being a nurse. Um, So there's the healer, there's the force of nature. This is where you are connected to nature, to the moon, to your cycles, and just like owning that you're an unstoppable force to be reckoned with in a sense. (laughs) And then there's the creatrix or the creatress. And this is where the womb, where you, you do, you, you can create human life, you birth life and also you birth ideas and all part of the manifestation. 
sorceress this is literally you are source you are god god's within you you um there's nothing more powerful than who you are so in a sense when you really can embody that you know that there's nothing to fear because you are it and the reason we fear we fear waking her up or we fear we fear um showing people our true selves or our power is because you fear that power of source energy that's within you Mm. so I love that one and then we have um the oracle did I say the oracle nope not yet okay (laughs) the oracle so this is basically where she's just in tune in touch with all of her clairs of course so where she is that channel she knows she knows that all of her answers are within because witches aren't just magical like they are wise they know science they know they bring they birth they're the midwives they're the healers they are the tribal leaders you know they are everything so yeah so those are the archetypes that we were we're going to work with wow so okay so okay go ahead jody i've got i have a question but you go first okay i just got so excited so <laughs> me it, too. <laughs> it is every woman, this is two parter is, is every woman, uh, a witch, um, or has the potential of being a witch and is every woman that being said, like also all of those archetypes that you said, or is it somebody that leans towards one or the other? <laughs> Do I read you? That was my it? question. Yes. That was my exact question. Oh my gosh. It's so amazing. <laughs> We're all linking up here. <laughs> I personally believe that whether you're a man or a woman, you are a witch because we've all been through these lifetimes of being persecuted, whether we, we have been through lifetimes of where we were persecuted and we were the persecutor. Mm. So, and yes, they, all of these archetypes are all within us because there it's just the energy and it's just, it's kind of just like our, um, um, you know, like our identities where we all hold a part of different things. And it's the same thing with the archetypes. And so is one more than the other? Yes. Because if you are naturally just a healer, of course, you're going to connect to that. If you, if you just are naturally intuitive or connected in some way, yes, you would connect to that. But in a sense, I know you too, most likely are connected to all of, all of them because you are just so tapped in. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause like, as you were going through them, I was like, Oh, I think that might be me. And then the next one, Oh, I think that might be me. Oh, maybe that's me. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe I'm just all those things. <laughs> that's so is cool. It I mean, yeah. is it, is it possible that a, a part of this wound, um, because, because something that came up in my own mind, and I'm just reflecting this for people that also feel this, but as you're going through the archetypes and I was the same as you, Heather, like, Ooh, maybe that one's me. Ooh, maybe that one's me. And then at the end, you know, Ooh, maybe they're all me. No, you can't be all of them. You're not that special. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's a part of it. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I think that's what she meant by (laughs) <laughs> being persecuted and the persecutor. <laughs> it could be self-persecution, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Wow. Amazing. This is so fun. What a great conversation, you guys. <laughs> yeah. You think that we also carry this um, persecution wound, not only from our past lives and our individual experience within that said past life, but also like as a collective, as the feminine collective, not even just females, but the feminine collective as a whole, um, are we carrying all of it? I think, I feel like um, that there is, actually, they were showing me this yesterday, or my guides, I would just call them they. Um, <laughs> they were showing me basically the moon, um, cycling the zodiac sign and I was like what is that and they were just saying that you know the moon is just the representation of what we what us as a collective all go through that are fairly similar and so when you ask that that's what immediately came to mind so I do think that we all do carry it but I think there's different levels as far as awareness or to you know if you're if you're just like kind of like whatever I don't really care then you just kind of blow through it But when you are starting to say like, hey, I really kind of like doing 
this and it's different. And I might, people might start thinking I'm weird or my parents will really be upset if they find out I'm using Oracle cards or tarot cards. Like they're going to think I'm doing evil things. Even when I started doing Oracle cards, I remember there was um, a friend and they were like, that's so demonic. And then I would get scared because I was like, am I started believing that of like, oh my gosh, maybe I am. And then if something were to happen, oh, that's, that was my fault because I started getting into, you know what I mean? So it's so, it's so deeply conditioned within us as a collective and our society in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting, this conversation about how people perceive those that are expressing their abilities, right? Because the reality is, is that we all have them. We all have them. It's just who's expressing them and who is it, right? And I think it's really interesting how people perceive those who are actually expressing their abilities as being evil or, and I, you know, maybe this comes from organized religion. I'm not sure, but I know when I first started speaking out about spirituality and, you know, connecting with crystal energy and, you know, I think everybody sort of starts off in the same little genre of like, oh, I'm going to get some crystals and now I'm going to get some cards and I'm going to go to yoga more and I'm going to start breathing more. And now I'm on to yoga and right. And so you're kind of like, moving through this process. And when I first started having these conversations, I had them with my mom and dad because I felt like it was a safe place to have them. And the tone (laughs) in my mom's voice when I first brought it up was all I could see was her imagining me in the corner in a circle with candles all around me with a Ouija board calling in the demons right (laughs) like I this is how I saw my I I could just see it flash across her forehead I was like oh I think I just freaked out my mom (laughs) you know then I was like oh maybe I shouldn't maybe I shouldn't you know talk about this you know maybe I shouldn't and so I just sort of like slowly leaked a little bit out every day. And after, you know, several years, you know, I had them all programmed up where they didn't think I was a wackadoodle with a Ouija board, you know, (laughs) but, you know, I think it's really, um, I think that's a really common experience Mm -hmm. for people when they're first coming into, you know, utilizing their abilities. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So when you are, when you work in the Akashic records, for those of our viewers who aren't really familiar with what the Akashic records are, I know we've talked about Akashic records in the past, but I don't think we've ever really like talked about what they are. So Melinda, like kind of give us a quick version of like, what are the Akashic records and what could someone find there? So I do work in the Akashic Records a little bit differently. I work in the quantum fields of Akashic Records. So I guess you would say a higher realm. But the Akashic Records are basically like the library of your soul. So it's all of your different past lives, your present life, and all of the potential uh, future lives that can happen. So I know some people go in there to like, like, where are you from? Or I don't do any of that. Because... Mm -hmm. That's just for fun. I, I'm doing work to do deep, deep healing. So I basically guide you into the journey. So I take you where I'm going. We go together. And mo- most likely you will see it. You will either see exactly what I see as I take you there, or you will go so deep into your subconscious. That it feels like you're falling asleep, but you come right back right when I'm done. So we go deep into your records, kind of like, the way that I see it, it's kind of like we walk through, well, we go through the magical forest because that's just what I always do. And that's where we really activate and open up your clairs and your abilities. And then we go through um, kind of like a castle gate, a golden gate we walk through. And then we go through like a corridor to your records. It just depends on where they take me. And then I usually will, your higher self is there and it's your records. And then we're in the quantum So basically we do whatever wants to come up. So in a sense, if we do witch wound, then I will say, take me to 
um, your deepest witch wound that's showing up right now. And then it'll tell me, it'll show me an experience or either tell me an age. Um, they usually will know right then and there. And then we, we, depending, you know, as we go, we go to the past life that it's directly connected to. If it is, it could be also ancestral. So it just depends on, cause we kind of find, like I call it like the cobwebs. So it's like a spider web, except when it's a wound, it's kind of a cobweb where it's all a little messy. So we kind of find where all of the webs are originating from. And then it, and then they see where do they, has it keep showing up. It's like the patterns of this life. And then when we get there, then obviously it's not me doing the work. I give them a choice. Are you ready to, to let this go? Are you going to let this go? That's why I like to take people there so that they experience it. Because this isn't about me healing them. This is about them. I'm just guiding them and helping them. This is about them deciding, seeing what the culprit is, where it's from, and then deciding if they're ready to let it go. So that's kind of how we do it. Wow, One of the things awesome. that I think is so cool is about the fact that you do this in the quantum field, right? So this alters every single timeline because you are doing it at the quantum level. And yeah. so it brought up a question about if you are, and hopefully this isn't too abstract for our viewers, but it's just a really interesting question. I think if you have somebody, let's say who is here from the future, okay, their, their soul um, was like developed and placed in a future timeline to the timeline that we're in. And now I know that time is not actually linear, right? It's all happening at once. It's all at the same time. We, we, we understand that. But for, for people who still think of time as linear, let's say that this uh, person in this incarnation is someone from the future and they have a wound that is in the future, would it affect them in this instance, do you think? Do you understand my question? Mm -hmm, I do. So if, if they have a wound from the future, so in a sense, yes, because there is no time. Right. So when you're in the records and the quantum field and you do a clearing, you don't ever write like those experiences will still be there. But when you tap back, like, you know, when you had a wound, like even like say something happened when you were a kid and you think about it, and you start feeling like you kind of like, uh, like you feel it, the contraction. So mm -hmm. after we do a like, clearing, we go always go back to that moment. And you know that they did a that they released parts of it is when they no longer feel that way. So when I always say it's like, it's not that we're, we're not undoing anything. We're not getting rid of any memories. Those will always be there. We're basically helping your nervous system to know that it's okay to move forward. Mm -hmm. Wow. Whew. Wow. That's amazing. So cleaning <laughs> up this, this witch wound, you know, taking care of this inside of the quantum, it, it helps you um, not only in this lifetime, but in future lifetimes, if you come back, if your soul comes back, right. Mm -hmm. And so what, are, what are the other benefits? Like, why would somebody want to dive into this outside of the, you know, like letting go of some fear? I think it's way more important. And I feel like we should put some emphasis on what's going to change in your life when you clean this stuff up. Mm-hmm. So for me, like the three, I think I already said it was like that connection, expression, and money. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the connection piece is like, they show me it's like the internal, right? That's when you kind of go within and you realize like the witch wound are, the, are wounding or even our femininity. It's about reconnecting back to ourselves, to source, mm -hmm. to um, our, the cycles of nature around us it's just kind of becoming natural again and this connection is also the connection outside of us so when you get to the point of where you realize okay I need to come back I need to tr start trusting my heart again um you know all of those things and then you start using this connection to relationships that's where the expression the outward part comes in of 
expressing your voice. This is what I have to say. This is my boundaries with this relationship. This is what I'm here for. And this is uh, what is calling me forward or this mission, this me becoming a disruptor for the collective. And when you really do that and you come with it and you go without and you start really um, expressing your, I guess, true self or your authentic self or whatever this, whatever you call it, that's really, in a sense, I guess, the money piece is for me, at least, because abundance isn't just about material money. It's about really the whole, um, the whole picture, like the holistic picture of yeah. I'm within, I express you, it's just like, nothing can mess with you. Like, then you become what Heather says, bleep you. This is who I am, <laughs> right? Like that's the true abundance. And then that's kind of, that's kind of what I feel is when they say, find your abundance when you, when you naturally flow. And I, I for me, that's really what that is. Oh yeah. I, I couldn't gr- agree more with every single thing that you said. Like if I had an exclamation button, I would like pop it up on the screen. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You know, it's really, it's, it's about like, it's the embodiment, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's so like, that's such a great way to describe it. You know, I think that's really beautiful. So I think everyone who's listening, rewind and listen to that all a second time. (laughs) And everyone who's on live now, it's, you got to come back for the replay. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I want to say one thing that just came to me right now was wherever there's so many different witch wounds, but wherever you feel like is your greatest wound. Like if it's like, Oh, I have a wound in my can't really speak or whatever. Like that's really your greatest source of power. Mm. Oh, right. And then it makes sense if you're connected with, you know, your greatest source of power and you're utilizing that within and then bringing it to without I mean, abundance is uh, inevitable. Yeah. It's truly inevitable when you stand in your power. Mm -hmm. Wow. I feel like my mind has just (sighs) been taken to a new level. (laughs) New level. Holy cow. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So to every, I know, right? So um, for everyone who's watching live, if you have any questions for Melinda or you want her to, you know, answer something specific to you, pop it up. Uh, now's your chance. So we're monitoring the chat. So definitely jump in with any questions that you have. Um, yeah. I'm like, I have, I have another to one. like take a minute. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to, to being in the Akashic records and at the quantum level, um, uh, when you're seeing these experiences, you kind of describe them as like cobwebs and stuff like that. Is it, can you give us some examples of different things that have come up that, you know, might be something that we would automatically think of, oh yeah, that's definitely a witch wound. I would expect to see that, but maybe some things that weren't even, you didn't think, or someone wouldn't have thought that they were connected to this witch wound that maybe surprised you. Um, so your question is, what have I seen that was a surprise? Yeah. Um, I think I'm trying to think. There's a lot. So a lot of I'm trying to think, but there's OK. So there I have a group where we are doing um, activating your third eye and every single one of them. are are fearful which they had no idea and actually the girls all in this lifetime have um I'm trying to think what is it it's a they have a wound around it's their I think it's the parents being separated so they all have the same thing in this group which is wild first of all and then we went to do um we just went into the, to the records so that I could rebuild their cones and rods of their third eye. (laughs) 
<laughs> I know I could tell you guys that. Yeah. And um, <laughs> wait, you're going to have to go back to that because I don't know what that is. A- <laughs> Okay, so, oh, more. <laughs> so basically what we found out was that they all have a fear of being there. They have this fear of actually seeing, and it's see it's, they're not even afraid just because they all can see um, ghosts and stuff. Like they see ghosts and spirits, but they have a fear of seeing the truth. I wonder how many people are struggling with that today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can we do a collective like healing on the world? For their comes and nods <laughs> in their third eye. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I think that is definitely related to the witch wound. We actually tomorrow night we're going into the we're going deeper into the fears and actually the Akashic records. Oh, cool. I wonder wow. if this is just my brain running away now. Um, I wonder if uh, you were talking about cones and rods, and I thought, oh, I wonder if you can like rebuild you know, the, sh- the throat chakra as if like the, the pipes that are in there and like what makes the sound and, and whatever from a quantum perspective, is that yeah. something you've done? Um, we haven't done it yet, but I'm doing mini Claire's. So we're doing, so we have the whole Claire's program, which is an 11, 11 Claire's. And then I'm doing mini, I'm not really calling them Claire's, but it's like the mini Claire's program but it's where I focus just on one. So the third eye activation, obviously it's the clear clairvoyance. So I haven't decided yet. I'm waiting to see what, which one's next, what's next. So, you know, I have to say like for, for uh, everyone here that I've had the pleasure of working with Melinda um, as she has been developing some of these programs and um, her, like breadth of knowledge and level of skill and um, uh, just the the intuitive um, rabbit trail that she'll take you on is is really something spectacular. You know, I think that uh, the programs that she has available are they're key. Everybody should do them because it really gets to the the root of the cause, the nuts and bolts of the problem, like just reach in, rip it out, look at it, fix it, reinstall, you know, and then how do you use what it is that you have learned? So, you know, when she talks about her program, um, the Claire's, you know, being 11 Claire's, it's not just 11 clairs. It's, it's, you know, initiation and activation of gifts and abilities. And, um, you know, like, it's like a, a deep dive into every single ability that you have on a soul level and how to integrate that into your human nature, like into your humanness, right? It's like, you're, you like basically going through this program, it's just, I'm so excited about it. Can you tell? Like, I'm just like, ah, it's so awesome because everything that we talk about as intuitives and healers and spiritual teachers and leaders, and, you know, all of the stuff that we talk about is covered in this program, you know? So if, if someone's watching, I just want them to know that they should reach out to you, Melinda, because that the, the Claire's program and your nurtured program, these are great places for people who are already picking up on the fact that they are this magical being inside of a meat suit Mm. and they need real connection to who they truly are. You know, it's just such a, a beautiful offering and, um, being on the inside scoop of, of watching you develop it has really been a wonderful gift in my life. So I think that everyone should take it. (laughs) Yeah, I I definitely had the initiation of it. (laughs) I think it's really awesome too, Melinda, that you provide a container. Um, I mean, I love the name nurture or nurtured. Like I, 
the word nurture is just such a beautiful word and so necessary when somebody is opening up, in my opinion, when someone's opening up all of these gifts, because I think you can fall right into that witch wound trap of, you know, I'm crazy and people are going to think I'm crazy and I don't, I can't trust this. There's so many things that I feel like if I could go back in time and do all it all over again, it would have been much easier to do it with you by my side and a bunch of other people than trying to do it, you know, alone, essentially. Yeah. I remember when I was like 1920s and I would go to the doctors all the time and he'd be like, what's, what's your problem? And I'd be like, I just want to be normal. And he would be like, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. I just want to feel normal. And like, literally that was like a search for mine because I always felt different and I always felt all the energies and I had no idea. I had no clue about this world or so you're right. If we would have did it at least together, it would have been so much easier. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, now we have you. So, and no one else that watches this will ever have to be alone on their journey to finding themselves again, finding these clairs, like really opening themselves up to stand in their their own divinity, their own power. Um, it's just, it's a blessing what you provide to the world. Really, truly. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. How did you, how did you for yourself, Melinda, like transition? It sounds, you know, you're talking about how you know, with your husband, like somebody's going to kill me. <laughs> like what, what helped you as you were transitioning through that to get to this point? Cause you're obviously very, like, I can feel that you're very rooted in what you teach and, and truly believe in it. And you feel very, very good, um, around all of this stuff. I don't feel any sort of fear around that anymore inside of you. Yeah. Um, actually, you know, growing up, I had a lot of near death experiences, so it kind of just sealed in the deal of the fear that I did have. And luckily my husband, I've been with him since I was 13 and he's never, ever doubted me. Like when mm -hmm. I said, I hear this, I feel this. Cause so basically, um, I, when we had our children, I started developing postpartum, um, depression, anxiety. I had a lot of perinatal mood disorders and that was my search of like, I want to be normal. I didn't understand. I was totally conditioned to how my parents had raised me. And luckily my, my husband was so patient. And um, when the children started getting older, they started seeing shadows and angels. And they started like, mommy, there's a man in the hallway. Or mommy, uh, God wants you to talk to him. Jeez, you know, I went to heaven. And so and he would, they would tell me all these stories that I'd be like, who are these kids? Like what's happening? And so when the shadow men would come to them, that's where I had to start. Okay. Get out some books, like figure it out. Like get the Bible. I, I knew nothing about anything. And so we started searching stuff and on this journey of trying to help my children understand energies and how to release um, shadow men. Um, that's when me and my husband kind of found past lives and our ancestry. And I started connecting to my mom's side of the Apache Native American. And I started receiving um, feathers and I started, my hands was starting to get activated and I would get these urges to touch people at work and put my hands and I would see miraculous healings. And then then my children are like, okay, Archangel Michael wants me to do, wants us to do this. And we would like literally, you know, do like a exorcist. And it was just kind of just became our life of like, this is, this is who we are now. This is what we do. And our mantra, we would always say it was just, we have four kids now, but it was the two. And it always say that we're pow we're so powerful together because it was like um, air, water, earth, fire, the four of us. And we would go in a circle and we were like, they were little, you know, like eight years old and so on. So, but we would do these things. And that's kind of, kind of how I learned. Cause we didn't, I didn't really have internet or anything back then. It was just um, all pure in, intuition of like, okay, this is what we do. And now we have, it's kind of into the whole, the two kids, they're literally star seeds, you know, from series B, it's like a whole, a whole transition. So it was more of like my children became 
my mission so that they weren't weird and they didn't have to search to be normal. And they are totally normal kids and they, we still struggle, especially with the 18 year old, you know, we have our issues, but um, that was, that was why I was no longer afraid. And it came to a point where I had almost died so many times that I was like, okay, well, you know what? I haven't died yet. And I'm not afraid anymore because it, it, it was just such the co- constant initiations. And what I feel like my purpose is, is to help people so that they don't have to f- have to go through these near death experiences. You don't have, your soul doesn't have to shake you up so intensely. It can be gentle. You know, when you are talking about um, that, that, that f- fear of death, right? That, so many people experience this fear of death, like, oh, I I could die, you know, like whatever this is, I could die. And I think that it's, it's really empowering when you get into this, you know, spiritual place where you recognize that death is a jumping off point Mm -hmm. to something else, you know, a new experience when you start looking at death through the lens of, of a jumping off point to something different than what you are currently experiencing or something new, it doesn't seem as scary anymore. It -hmm. almost like loses its power over you that death is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a really like beautiful perspective to have when you're stepping into who you are and you're allowing your, your soul and your heart space to drive the, drive the story of your life that, you know, if the worst thing in the world that can happen is death, is it really the worst thing in the world that could happen? Or is it the best thing in the world that could happen? You know what I mean? Like it's, it kind of, it changes everything the way that you, that you can look at living and dying and all of the experiences that you have when you're looking at it of the, the lens of is death the worst thing that you can experience? Yeah. I remember one time um, uh, in the hospital as a nurse, there was a patient where sometimes in the hospital, like if they're really sick, we put them on hospice in the hospital, what's called comfort care, where we basically keep them comfortable till they pass. And um, there was this one, lady where she didn't have any family there was like you know stuff going on so I would stay in there with her because I had actually had time when I would I would go back in there and I remember when she passed I saw her like a like a little orb or like a I can't remember it's like gold like goldish kind of and it left her body and it was almost like what I got from that was relief it was like, I'm free. And it just, it just left and took off. And I was always like, oh my, like it became, death became beautiful. I did work in hospice for a while because I was so like into death of like understanding it. Um, but I always remember that, that feeling of like freedom. That's beautiful. When I think about, um, um, death and near death experiences, like my own personal experiences, it always gets me every time that I didn't die, like that it was so close and that if, you know, one left turn or one right turn, one other decision, and I wouldn't be here, but I am and how significant that feels that I didn't like, I didn't leave this plane at that time. Um, I, that also feels freeing on the other side when you go through something really tough. Did you feel that as well going through the experiences that you had? Yeah, it came to a point, I think too, it's like, especially when like COVID hit and I had a, when I was working in it and seeing so much death, that's when it really was like the huge turning point for me. It was like, you know what? Like I had just went through war for like these three or four months intense like I felt the PTSD the trauma after it was so overwhelming and that's when I said you know what 
I, nothing is going to stop me. I'm going to speak. I'm going to do whatever I want. I don't really give a crap what anybody says or has anything to say against me. It doesn't even matter because I literally just watched like people die every single day. And it was so hard to um, really, I remember going to one of Heather's channelings. I always tell her that I remember asking Archangel Michael, like, how do I get through this? Cause it was just such a different type of emotion that I never thought I would ever experience. And I remember he always, he said that you have to basically honor them, like me feeling sorry for them or crying. It's me showing, saying that they don't actually have power when they do have power. They're just as powerful as I am. So honor them in that journey. And so that's kind of what I do, what I did. And I'm also honoring myself now of that. This is what I, this are my gifts. This is what I have to say and no more fear. Of course, I experience fear. You know, we all have that experience, but it doesn't stop me anymore. Mm. Yeah. Honor them in that journey and honor yourself. What a statement, if you didn't write that down like I did, <laughs> write it down. I think that's so incredibly beautiful. And I think so relevant because there's a lot of things that people are watching right now and, you know, you feel sad or upset or fearful or whatever. And, you know, going back to that, that phrase, honor them in their journey, they still have power and honor, honor yourself and the power that you have. It's just very, very beautiful. Thank you for that reminder. (laughs) Thank Heather. (laughs) <laughs> thank Michael yeah. <laughs> thanks all around everybody <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> yeah oh. yeah I was trying to think about when that was I guess that was probably the summit yeah which I think was happening during the really wow. like that was the really like the heat up of COVID that was in what like January of 21 was it or 2020 no, it was in 2021. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was really, uh, I think that that was like that big second wave. Yes. That, yes, that right. happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. I worked with you right after that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Aww. All comes around. <laughs> so incredible. Um, is there any, you know, we're, we're running down on time now, but I, I want to hear from you. Is there anything that you feel called to share at this time that would be helpful for the the souls that you know are here and, and are watching um what i want to say is just like a little story of like back in the day of the shaman there was this there's a uh, i don't remember what tribe it was but this this tribe and remember like the witch it's are the shamans they're the medicine women they're the healers they're they're all of that but there was this tribe and they the men would rely on the women to use their voice and when the women spoke that's when the men were supposed to stop working that's when they knew that they had to stop what they were doing no matter what take their break do the family whatever thing and so when um when this shaman i i heard i read this in a in a story it was a true story though but when he went to the, the modern world where it was creating and he asked where are all the women because the women were working, the men and the women were working. And he was like, this is exactly why everyone is burned out because there's no woman there to use their voice, to use our voice to say it's time to stop working and it's time to live and enjoy your family. So I just really like that analogy of we're so afraid to use our voice to speak up, to say what we want, to say like, no, I don't want to work right now. I want to actually take care of myself or I want to be with my family. And that's mm-hmm. actually the tradition of how it used to be. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. That is beautiful. And you know what came through while you were talking? It was, you know, seeing, I think one of one of your gifts, if, if I may call it this, is just activating people that you're, that you're around. I'm I'm sure that you're aware that you do this, but I feel like my cones (laughs) are being repaired (laughs) as we speak. Um, But what came through when you said that because of just being in your energy, seeing the truth 
um, was, you know, that old story of the siren calling old, you know, men to, to see and like capturing them and, and, you know, whatever, and, and seeing how distorted that was and how it was probably, if I was to assume, um, you know, a direct correlation to, to changing the world to what we have today, to suppressing women's voices, uh, or that feminine voice, um, inside of, inside of us and in, in outside in our world that's just wow yeah incredible (laughs) amazing amazing melinda thank you so much for coming onto our show today and sharing your knowledge and if if people want to find you where should they go how does someone find you if they want to work with you so Instagram, it's at love underscore Melinda. And I also have a website, lovemelinda.com. Excellent. And we will put those links in the show notes. So you will be able to link directly to her. And um, this has just been such a wonderful conversation. And, you know, I think it's um, one of the comments that we got was, you know, super interesting, great perspective on the topic, totally provided a new view for me. And I think that that is something that, everyone who's watching can agree with it. This has been life-changing. I know for me and, um, and I'm just, I'm very grateful. Thank you for, for coming on today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. And if you guys enjoyed this conversation, make sure that you hit that like button. Um, you share it with all of your friends, make sure you're subscribed and you've got the notification (laughs) bell on. So you never miss an episode next week. We, our, we are talking about the future is bright and how to focus on where we're going rather than the minutia of the daily life that we see in front of us. It's going to be a wonderful conversation. Thanks for being with us today. Uh, sending you guys so much love.